Hi, I'm Drew, and I'm an amateur model builder. I'm building a layout in my basement based on the Frisco Railroad in the Ozarks, called the White River Line. In this episode, I'm going to be working on my track plan. In this episode, I'm going to be working on my track plan. Now for the layout that I started 15 years ago, I used a track plan that I got out of a book that was created by a professional. But this time, I'm going to be creating my own track plan. Since this isn't something I've done before, I'm facing a bit of a learning curve. And I'm trying to make best use of the resources that I have available to me. I'll make note of some of these resources as we go along in the video, but for now, Let's jump into it. I began the planning process by thinking through what I want to model on my layout, the story I want my layout to tell. As I've mentioned, I'm basing this layout on the Frisco Railroad, which was based out of my hometown until they merged with the Burlington Northern in 1980. Although the Frisco served many different states, my operation will be based in the Ozarks. I've also chosen the 1930s as the general time frame. This will be a freelance layout, meaning that it will not be prototyped on any particular branch operated by the Frisco. Designing a freelance layout will give me the artistic license to do as I please and give me more freedom. I also decided I wanted it to be a continuous running track rather than a point to point. In operation, I want to have the freedom to simulate railroad operations. But I also want to just let my train run and indulge my inner child to watch the train loop around the tracks through the scenery I create. As I consider simulating railroad operations, I need to consider how this is done in the real world and how other modelers simulate operations. I don't have much experience with this. I found JC Rip Tracks series from Loop to Layout as a good starting point to begin thinking about this. I decided I wanted a small switching yard, a couple of industry spurs, and a team track. This will give me a few options when simulating operations. In addition to freight hauling, I do want to have some passenger service as well. While freight hauling is the focus of operations, the importance of Frisco's passenger service in the area will give me the opportunity for more diversity in my operations. Additionally, I consider geography. Although I do want a continuous running plan, I also want to have a good balance between urban and rural scenery. I want to have a town with some industry as well as a very small town and some rural scenes that service this industry in town. I then brainstormed a wish list of features for my layout. What seems interesting? fun, or remind me of the landscape I grew up in. My list included a river with bluffs above it, a swimming hole, as well as a sandbar. The train should follow the river for a bit and cross it with a bridge as well. I'd also like a spring with a small stream coming from it with a mill. I'd like a small downtown area with shops and restaurants.
I'd like some elevation change at some point on the layout. A heavily wooded Ozark Mountain. I'd like a hobo camp, a logging camp, and some moonshiners. I'd also like to have a working quarry and a hay field with a farmer mowing and or raking the hay. Finally, I'd like a general store in the rural portion of my layout. When planning the industry for my town, I considered a number of options. I already had a partially completed cement factory, so that definitely made the list, and the quarry that I model will service this factory. I also decided that a lumber mill, all of these industries would be typical for the time frame I am modeling. Additionally, they would give me the opportunity to build rural scenes that would service this industry. For the team track, I plan to build a few smaller industries, but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Here is the space I'm planning on using. Obviously, I'm going to need to move some things around. I measured the space I have. It's around 12 feet. By 9 feet. Allowing about two feet or more to walk around on each side, I figured I could go with a little bit larger plan, something like six by eight. Keeping this space in mind, I began drawing up some plans on my computer. I began with a basic loop. I played around a bit with the radii on the corners, but found that I would probably need to go with 18 inch radii curves to get the space that I needed. I then started thinking about the general placement of towns, hills, and other features. I added in a passing siding for my depot. I added another passing siding to service the industry in the town I was going to create. Next, I started on the spur for the concrete factory I was going to build. I would also include a team track as a part of this spur. I soon found that I didn't really have room for a switching yard if I was going to build a good rural scene around the town. I decided to axe the switch yard, sacrificing operations for my nostalgia for the Ozark countryside. Next, I began working on the portion of the track plan that would service the quarry and the lumber camp in the Ozark Mountain rural scene I was going to build. I modified the passing siding for the depot to allow this portion of the layout to connect back up with the main loop. This took quite a bit of tinkering.
I also began modifying the passing siding for the freight. I wanted to extend this loop, providing a little bit more space for operations. This portion of the track would be elevated to go over the spurs and loops as they come off the main line. I added this turnout to simulate that the track is connected to the larger railroad as a whole. A bit more tinkering was needed to get the radiuses right, but I was on my way to a rough draft for my track plan. So thanks for joining me for this episode as I worked on my track plan and my layout plan for the White River Line. Now this is really just phase one of the planning process for me. And the time it took between editing, uh, shooting this video, editing it, and, and the time that I'm getting this out and posted, I've already posted this layout a number of different forums online and have received some really great feedback on some changes I can make to make this layout even better. And in fact, I am considering some pretty radical changes to this layout. Now the story that I want to tell is, remains the same and many of the elements and features will remain the same, but I want to look for the best way to tell this story, to make the uh, layout that is the most fun and interesting and dynamic that I can. So if you've got some additional feedback for me, I'd love to hear it and you can post it on down below in the comments. Now, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter, where my handle is at White River Line in both cases. You can also find me on Facebook with a page for White River Line. I've got all of those links below. So, thanks again for joining me. I'd love to, to have you subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, and if you click on the bell up above, you'll be notified whenever I put out new videos. So next week, or I guess in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be posting another video, and this time I'm going to be building a, a mill from scratch. It is my first scratch build project structure ever, so I should have a lot of nice, uh, a lot of fun learning how to do that. So please join me next time as I build the White River Line.